What's up y'all, it's your boy Daily26 and welcome back to another Squeeze Squad video. Today I'm here ranking the Pokemon games by generation, a trend I've been wanting to hop on for a while, but haven't got to. So we're doing it now, goddammit. So, let's just jump right into it. So, easily top tier, Soul Silver, Heart Gold, Goaded. These are some great games, I love them. I love the starters personally, great selection, Pokewalker, fun addition, didn't make any sense, wasn't needed, absolutely not, but I loved it. We also had the Pokeathlon was fun, Days of the Week people, Lance was extremely fun to battle, I'll admit the level gaps are a little eh, but Gen 4 brought a lot of great additions that people still want back with Harkold Soul Silver, so I can't not goat them. So S tier, Heart Gold, Souls Lover, my opinion, best game. All right, moving on to worst. Now this is gonna be a tough one. <laughs> this is gonna be a tough one. Worst Pokemon games. Uh. Now keep in mind, I was born in '98. I'm gonna put. Red, blue is the bottom. Now, I don't hate Gen 1. I don't hate Gen 1. Personally, it was hard for me to be able to play the Gen 1 games just because the sprites don't look as done up. And I started around Gen 3. My first games were actually Fire, Red, Leaf, Green. So I did start with playing my journey through Kanto, like a lot of the older generation, but it just wasn't my game. I was like, I didn't have that love nostalgia for it. I saw Blastoise. I'd see coughing all weird i'd see a lot of guys in that game where i was like there's better designs the towns look better in the game boy advance version the pokemon look better everything just looks better and i know i'm not really a big graphics guy to me graphics don't make or break a game but the ability to just see the pokemon as they were intended is a huge thing for me so i gotta put red and blue at the bottom making our way back up Next, probably, yeah, I'd kick myself if I didn't do it. S tier, black and white too. Where's black two? There it is. Black and white two are extremely good games. The starters, I'll admit, I personally really like them. I know they're not everyone's favorites, which, and I keep mentioning starters in the Pokemon, but one, biggest part of the game. Two, you always start with the starters. So it's the first thing to judge the game upon, honestly, in my opinion, at least. So... To me, I put I still put black and white two up here just because like the gym leaders are great. They actually do something, which a lot of people forget about. They do something. The story's great, especially with the continuation from black and white's amazing story. And the towns look great. The animations look great. The sprites look great. Everything in Gen 5 just looks amazing. The battling was amazing. So they had a great after game. They had a great during game. They had a great main game, post game. You know, they had great Pokemon. Everything about Unova, to me, is perfect. Everything to me, to me about Unova is perfect. The only thing that I didn't like about these games was the movie-making game, but, like, who cares? With that, I do gotta say, with how much Black 2, White 2 added to the series and to the games, Black and White are only A tier. Both great games, but just because of how much Black and White 2 added to them, which, you know, there's sequels, they should add more, they should have more, but, like, they just added so much more where I was like, come on, man. <laughs> like, I'm doing it. It's my list. You don't like it? I don't care. Like, you know, Black 2, White 2 is just amazing. Black and White are still really good, and if Black 2, White 2 didn't exist, these would be S tier, but because we have seen greener pastures in Unova, we've seen them take the bar for story. We seem to take the bar for everything that they've made from 1 to 5. And as soon as they did uh, Black and White 2, they even elevated it a little more. Just because they elevated it slightly more, I have to put Black and White in A tier. So going back down, going back down to negative. Sun and Moon. Normal Sun and Moon. Now, Normal Sun and Moon, the only reason they are not the worst games is just because I can't get behind red and blue personally i love red and blue because they brought us everything if they're the only games to date i don't know if they'd hold up like they did 
If it was just red and blue, I think they'd, I think Pokemon would be a one-hit wonder. That's it. But you know what? They, again, it was the it was the building blocks for the franchise, so I can't hate blue and red too too much. But sun and moon, I can. Sun and moon, I could hate to the goddamn sun to the moon. <laughs> I could hate it from the Mason Dixon all the way to fucking Antarctica. I just don't like these games all that much. They getting rid of the gym leaders was risky. It was okay. I don't think they played it the best. The starters, I hate them. I do not like the starters. I think they're all bad. Rowlet, Poplio, Litten. Just don't like them. I've, I know, I have one spot in each I like. Like Rowlet's cute. Poplio's cute. Torcat's cool. It's one third of your entire line. None of them are finals. <laughs> The ones you're stuck with for most of the game. So, I don't know that. The Lusamine forming into the Ultra Monster thing. Ultra Beast just didn't... I didn't like it combined with Neo Lego. It, it just didn't get me. I don't know. I didn't like it. The only reason it can't be the worst for me, I will admit it's personal reasons, I did a lot of competitive battling in Gen 7. I realized that the games themselves are not good, but the meta game I really enjoyed. I really loved it in the singles format. I can't speak for doubles. I didn't like Z crystals all that much, but they kept megas, which kind of balanced it out. It wasn't a forced battle mechanic like our next picks, sword and shield. I grabbed those reverse and that ticked me off. Sword and shield weren't bad. I don't hate them. Actually, let's move them here then. I think they're C tier. I don't think they're the worst games in the franchise, like everyone says. I love Dynamax battles. I love Dynamax raids. Everything that was to do with after the story, I loved. I liked, I liked more of the Pokemon they added than Sun and Moon. I hated the Pokemon Sun and Moon. I hate most of them. Come at me. I loved what they did with Sword and Shield in the sense of everything except for the story. I cannot play Sun. I cannot play Sword and Shield again strictly because I don't like the story. And it's not even a big... I know story is not the biggest thing for Pokemon. It hasn't always been. It doesn't always need to be, especially when you look at what's left. You know what story matters. You know, it's something where I just couldn't get behind it. I don't remember anything in that game. I can remember a lot of the games. I cannot remember anything to do with Sword and Shield. And for that, they have to go here. Following. Because the DLCs were cool. The DLCs were cool. I really liked those. I liked the DLCs. Those were fun. I liked... I, mean, I liked them. <laughs> I don't know. They're good games. I liked them. I enjoyed them. I would buy them again if I had to. If someone took away all my Pokemon games and said, hey, you want them, you gotta go buy them again. I would rebuy Sword and Shield. I don't know if that's because it's still current. I know it's not the meta because Gen 9 is out. Is Gen 9 not on here? To be added later. I like Sword and Shield. They're great games. I put a lot of time into it. Me and Sluice did a lot of streaming with it. We did a lot of shiny hunting. I did a lot of battling. I did a lot of... Everything I did was post-game. just the main story didn't really grab me. I loved the Crown Tundra. Uh, the Kung Fu DLC was like, eh. But we're there. You know, I did hit an epiphany, though. I do not think Red and Blue are the worst games. I think it's Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Looks-wise, amazing. I think it's the best-looking game on the Switch. It's the best-playing game on the Switch. It... Everything that makes a game a game in the sense of it's bare minimal. It plays well, it looks great, but the mechanics of like the the ball throwing, like the Pokemon Go aspect, I didn't like the I didn't like that they reverted back to Gen 1 mechanics in the sense of like battle mechanics. I didn't like Gen 1 battle mechanics all that much. Cause just because I'm I'm used to the newer ones. I'm assuming. I'm used to the newer ones. But even then, when I say new, I'm used to like Gen 3 and above. I'm used to natures, abilities, all this other stuff that make the game more of a chess game and a rock, paper, scissors type game combined as opposed to Gen 1's just hit the strongest move you got. I didn't like that. I didn't like that too much. And, you know, the game adds some cool things. It was great. And it was fun. And that's the other thing, too, that people need to understand. Every Pokemon game on this list is fun. I played them and I enjoyed them. I loved every one of these games. But when it comes to a Pokemon game, S tier is greatest game is in the conversation for greatest games of all time, period. I think Heart Gold and Soul Silver and Black and White 2 are debatably one of the best RPGs ever. Or JRPGs. JRPGs or RPGs ever. 
Can't say that for some of the other ones. But you know what? I still love every one of these games. So, with that out of the way real quick. Still love Pikachu and Eevee. They were fun. They were cool to play. But like... I don't know. I didn't like how what they did with the alternate timeline thing. I don't know. The red battle. The red battle really got me. It's just sitting there. Mewtwo was okay. The... I like the overworld shiny or the overworld. Yeah, I like the overworld shinies too. But I like the overworld Pokemon. Those were a cool mix. You got to see them in their habitats, but like they weren't as flushed out as I wanted them to be. It's not what a Switch Pokemon game should be. And not to mention, too, it's Kanto for the, let's see, we got one, two, technically three, fourth time. And that's if you don't count the remakes of these on Virtual Console. So it's the fourth or fifth time we've gone to Kanto. And for it to not hold up all that much, kind of, it doesn't sit with me well. Especially when the other Kanto games, which I'm going to put in B, did pretty well. I know a lot of people have some gripe with Fire Red Leaf Green. I do know that. But set, but having the entire Kanto game and then adding the Sevi Islands was really cool. I liked being able to go to Sevi Islands because when I played Red and Blue for the first time on the Virtual Console, which by the way... I own a copy of Blue. I've played through Blue on a Game Boy. It just, I could never beat it. Not to mention too, I don't even know if that copy saves anymore. <laughs> just because the battery ran dry. But you know, uh, the Game Boy Advance games, Fire Red, Leaf Green, to me were really good. I enjoyed them. It was my first experience through Pokemon and Kanto. And just adding just the quality of life improvements, what Gen 3 added, and just how it looked was amazing. Loved every bit of the game. And I put them in a solid B because I don't care for Kanto 2 too much. I think they're great Pokemon in there. I know they're a lot of fun. And I'd never stick my nose up at playing them again. But it's just to me, they were okay. They were okay. In the grand scheme of Pokemon games. Alright, following. Probably... I'm going to put X and Y and C. I really enjoyed them. It's where I got my competitive start. I like all the starters. I like the ability to get a second starter. The legends were cool. And it was just like a fun game. I remember a lot of it. A lot of the music was really good. A lot of the travel areas were cool. It looked really fun. The rollerblades were kind of a cool addition. Go a little uh, thing. I don't like that they were on the 8 point axis still. You can't make a 3D, 3D game and be on an 8 point axis. It just doesn't work. It, it was playable. But... It was if you wanted to walk, you had to use you had to use the D-pad, which is okay for precision's sake, but at the same time, I don't know. It's their first attempt at a 3D game, so I'm not mad. Megas were a great addition. The meta game was so fun. Honestly, I don't think the meta has been the same since X and Y until now in Paldea. So I think X and Y plus the addition of the fairy type, all the Pokemon they added, like Talon, Flame, Sylveon. Pyroar was really cool to me at least and then the Megas looked amazing Kalos was really good And I think Kalos can stay there. I'm gonna put all of the Hoenn games in a Every last one of them I Think Hoenn was really good. I like this. I like the story I like the start because that was the first time they did the bad guy huge bad guy huge stakes huge legends I think the stakes were really good. I mean, like, they had ho -Oh and Lugia and Gen 2, but those weren't really, like, life enders. Those were... We're here. Kaka, Stars are all amazing. The additions of Gardevoir, Agron, Absol, Flygon, the Regis are cool, Latios, Latios. Debatably the best box are Legends. Like, just really good games. Everything about these games are really good. I have a lot of fun with them. The only thing that doesn't get them into that S tier for me is that post game zero post game until emerald and even then it's kind of eh omega ruby alpha sapphire have to suffer the same fate strictly because of the things that they actually did in the main story i love what they did with wally being wally an actual character you'd care about because he's i don't know dying because <laughs> he's dying that's all it took for me to not hate wally but you know giving you latios and lot and i get you could box latios latios i get it i personally did it i understand but having Latios and Latios before your sixth gym badge just irked me the wrong way. I didn't like it. I don't like that addition. I don't like that they got rid of the cave in Duford. Because that was just... Which they, they still have it. It's still there. It's just it's not what it was before. 
and the whole idea of Pokemon is exploration. I get a lot of people don't like that cave, and I get when I replay the games, I kind of just jet right through it. But it's because I've played these games so many times where I know that cave inside out. I know Granite Cave. So for me to take that away, it was kind of like, and eh. taking away a whole area was a little weird to me. The Megas that they had are really good. The only thing that really kills me is they took away the Battle Frontier and replaced it with the Ma Battle Maison. You had gold and you just said, I'm good. You guys could have done that again and just decided not to. Just put the Battle Mason back in. Two daycares was a cool idea, helped for training, helped for competitive. So, and I didn't mention this with X and Y, but keeping uh, battle training on the bottom screen with the targets was really cool. I forgot exactly what it's called. I like these games, I think they're really fun. I would gladly replay them. Heck, I'm actually replaying Sapphire right now. So I think they're really good games. I just can't put a mess here for those little reasons. We're gonna throw yellow into C. Now, I know this goes against everything I said with red and blue, because this is the same thing, but they updated the sprites in uh, yellow. They added the ability to get all the starters. They added so much into yellow, from red and blue at least, to where I, I justify it moving up a tier. It was fun. It had following Pokemon for the first time. It made a lot of Pokemon that were harder to get, more accessible. You know, it was just, they were just really good games. I liked yellow. It didn't take away the backwards compatibility. You could still play, you know, which I know Pokemon normally does that, but... They really kept it. They could have just said, screw it, we're doing yellow, and you can't trade a red and blue, but they kept it, and I liked that. Speaking of being able to trade a red and blue and keeping all your stuff with you, I did really love gold and silver, but unfortunately, they are B tier for me. The only reason they're B tier is the same reason why uh, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, S tier. It's just the stuff that they added to Heart Gold, Soul Silver and made it that much better. Gold and Silver is still great. They still have the Days of the Week people. They still have the great starters. The sprites are cool. I actually really love a lot of the sprites. I think Blastoise's sprite is amazing. Typhlosions, for alligators, Meganiums. Umbreon look cool. Steelix look cool. Everything in that game looks great. I love the art style to it because it is slightly different from red and blue i love the designs the sprites the colors everything about that game i love them but everything they added to heart gold and soul silver just made them that much better and of course you saw the, you had the red fight and everything like that but heart gold soul silver added quality of life improvements that also allowed you to get some of the pokemon you couldn't get before you have to get to mount silver to get tyranitar the pseudo legend now, I don't know if it's, I don't know how long it's been since y'all played Gen 2, but Mount Silver is the absolute end of the game. And I get that, you know, you can still catch them all, you can still battle, you can do all that stuff. But remember, online wasn't exactly that big during normal Gold and Silver because it didn't exist. Not for these games. So, you couldn't, tr you know, you, in order to trade yourself for Tyranitar for earlier in the game or Larvitar, you had to go beat, you had to buy two copies, you had to beat one of them, and you had to trade with yourself. Or you had to beat the game breed a larvitar catch a larvitar trade it to a friend restart the game get to a point where you could trade and then trade back just so you can play through the game with tyranitar which is cool in all you know it's the fun little aesthetic that we have to, that we used to have to do back in the day before wi-fi to do all this stuff but at the same time you know hound doom is also not available till later in the game and it's just something where they they took dark types your only ones you could play through through the game at a somewhat early spot, I believe are Murkrow and Umbreon. Only two. Sneasel's not available till Ice Path. Again, Houndoom, I don't even think is available in the Johto. I think you have to go to Kanto. I think it's in Kanto. If not, it's so late Johto, it's not even funny. Now in Tyranitar, again, literally end of the game. It, because of those mistakes with the Pokemon, and as much as everyone's like, there's so many other guys. Well, Pokemon is the game. It's called Pokemon. If I can't access the ones I want until later, with no use for them. Because what's the use in using Tyranitar if I've beaten the game? Like, yes, I, there's still stuff to do after you beat the game, but it's the generics of what's left in Pokemon game once you beat the main story. Collect them all, battle with your friends, trade, that's it. This is old, remember, this is old school games, guys. I'll throw a crystal into A. I'm gonna throw a crystal into A just to finish off gen 2 i'm gonna throw a crystal in a for the same reason why gold and silver can't be s tier but why yellow gets to be better than red and blue it's just because they just added so much more stuff suicune has an actual reason now for things i actually don't even know what happens with suicune the original gold and silver i couldn't tell you i couldn't tell you but adding suicune like i know he's available in the game i actually don't even know how to get him i mean entirely honest i have no idea how to get suicune no idea <laughs> 
I can't remember if it's another roaming or if Yusin was in the game or if I'm mixing up with Heart Gold Soul Silver. I don't know. I played these games so many times I couldn't tell you which way it is exactly, but I still love Crystal. I love the advancements it made over Gold and Silver. Again, all of Gen 2 is great. All of it's great. It's just in the grand scale of this. Crystal added some quality of life improvements. It adds some new stuff, so it gets to go to A tier but I can't put it any higher than that. In fact, actually, this might even be too high, but I put it there, and I'm sticking with it. We haven't even touched Gen 4 yet. I'm gonna throw a B tier. For those who don't know, Turtwig is my favorite starter of all time, my favorite Pokemon of all time. Love Turtwig, so it hurts to put his main games at B. I love Dialga, I love Palkia, I love Giratina. I love that whole trio, I love the idea of them. I love the physical special split that the game brought, the online, online competitions, VGC, all that was brought in during gen 4 gen 4 is when they kicked it up to another gear and they had so many legends the pokemon are cool you know it, it's something where i love them but there were you know it was their first it's just like red and blue where it's their first attempt so online wasn't perfect you know you had shadot could break diamond if you didn't know that shadot could actually break diamond by using shatter so there's one spot in the game where you gotta either oko it or you just gotta avoid that trainer which is annoying because i believe it could wipe your save file i believe uh really good games the underground was cool it was a lot of stuff where i love diamond and pearl but mount coronet it was really really cool a great idea but it also is such a hindrance i go through that mountain 700 times in that game cynthia is really cool but the rest of the elite four who <laughs> I think it's Bert, or I think it's um, Bertha, Flint, Cynthia. <laughs> I don't know. I get Diamond Pro really good, but the HM requirements are a lot. Victory Road that makes Victory Road even more annoying. But like some of the characters are like you know Ry Riley. Riley's cool, Buck is cool, like the uh, Chansey girl. Everyone that they add in like has a purpose when you see them. There are some like eh, characters that don't matter, but most of the time if they throw a character in your face, it's because they matter, which is great. I love that. So there's no keeping track of pointless characters. Let's finish it off with we have Ultra Sun and Moon. This is hard. This is hard. I want to put them A tier. I do, but I know, I know they're not. I guess it's the answer. I know they're not. So they're going to go B. We're going to go... They're going to go B tier. I have to throw them B tier because I love their competitive game. I loved Gen 7 competitive so much. I had a lot of my start to content creation in Gen 7. Uh, Gen 7's meta. I love the ability to get whatever starter you want. You know, I, I love it. It's just a big breath of fresh air compared to normal Sun and Moon. If normal Sun and Moon was Ultra Sun and Moon, they wouldn't be here. They would not be here. They fixed most of the bad parts about the story. They took away the Lusamine combining with the Neolego. They mentioned they added in the story about how the uh, Poke Bean guy is actually Lusamine's um, ex-husband or husband, something like that. I believe he had a uh, he had like amnesia. You know, uh, the Pokemon in it are okay, and the trials are okay. But like again, I just loved the meta that much. I love the meta personally enough to put the game B tier. I would play it again. I don't. Yeah, I'd put. I play it again, but that's about it. And even then, it'd be speeding through to play competitive. Last and finally, one of, in my mind, the most controversial Pokemon games of all time, Platinum. Platinum is one of the most controversial games of all time because it fixes everything about Diamond, and to me at least, because it fixes everything about Diamond and Pearl. Doesn't bring in all the great changes that Heart Gold Soul Silver did. It's a good game. I love it. Distortion World, amazing. Flushes out Cyrus more. Now he's more of a sociopath and all these other aspects to him. And I think I have to continue the pattern where it added just enough to go A tier, but not enough to go up again. So, with this, I think the only thing I have left to add is Paldea. It's the only thing I have left to add. Obviously, I don't have it on this bottom screen, so I'll add it somewhere else. I'd say Scarlet and Violet to me. I'm going to say they're A tier. I think the starters are great. The Pokemon are great. The story was fun. I remember most of it. I know a lot of the areas. Terror raids are fun. The only thing that holds this game back 
is it's the most broken Pokemon game of all time. It is hard to make a broken game more broken than Red and Blue. It is. They had a lot of glitches, a lot of problems. Most of the game didn't run. I know since the version 2 patch, it's actually played a lot better. It's been a lot better. And I've actually enjoyed my experience even more with the with the version 2 patch. But before that version 2 patch, there were some things. People were falling through the screen. Games were crashing. You know, like everything was lagging for the most part. If there was weather and a lot of Pokemon, your game would barely run. When you go to the rainforest area, at a high Pokemon rate, by a lot of obstacles like trees, rocks, stuff like that, trainers, and like the game just didn't run. It's plain so the game just didn't run for me all that well. The bamboo area also didn't run all that well for me. I know for some people it was different because I know the weather changes in certain areas of the game, certain times, and all that. But throughout the game, the bamboo area, like the whole top right portion of the map, barely played for me. But they've shown that they've listened to the fans. They brought back 60 minute timer. They made competitive more fun again. They removed the uh, bullcrap of Z-Moves and Terror um, terror Pokemon. Or sorry, no, they kept Terror Pokemon. They got rid of uh, Gigantamax and Gigamax, or the frick that was called. They did a lot of things that they fixed with Sword and Shield and just made a really good game. They did take away character customization, which was a little annoying, but... I think Paldea is really good, they're really good games, and I gladly would, I've even been tempted to restart it. I've been tempted to restart it, I know I can make another profile on the Switch, but, you know, I don't want to have 700 profiles. I've debated it, I'm not going to, because it's just, comp for competitive reasons, I don't want to, but, you know, competitive has never been easier, breeding, I'll admit, is a little wonky now, but still works, you know, it's, it's a lot of stuff where the game looks, when it works, it works. The game looks amazing when it works. I'll admit when it doesn't. Eh. Anyway, guys, this is going to be my TLDR Pokemon main series game tier list. Uh, let me know if you want me to go back in the future and do more in-depth covers of these games from my personal experience. I personally really love Pokemon, obviously, but I can't really do a big retrospective video in a tier list, so I kind of just had to touch over what I could off the top of the head. Didn't plan this one out too much. But I just wanted this to, I wanted it to come fresh. I wanted it to come off of my opinions, they come straight off my mind, because that's what allows discussion for people to actually want to talk about this damn game. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you like and comment down below, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye!